Okay, one of the most controversial and popular restaurants in Disney World has just undergone a huge change. We're going to give you the insider scoop on Chef Mickey's today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're going to be munching our way around the highly disputed Chef Mickey's over at Disney's Contemporary Resort. This is one of the toughest restaurants to get a dining reservation for in Disney World. But do you really need to do it or are you going to wind up disappointed in the end? That's what we're getting to the bottom of right now. First, let's talk about what exactly Chef Mickey's is and why its reputation has preceded it. Well, Chef Mickey's is one of the highest energy restaurants on property. You've got character meet and greets, you've got monorail sightings overhead, you got various Mickey-shaped foods you can pick up off the buffet line, and you may even get to participate in a napkin twirling competition on occasion. But its biggest claim to fame is the fact that you can meet all the Fab Five characters here, Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, and Pluto. At other character dining locations in Disney World, which also feature the Fab Five, like Hollywood and Vine and Disney's Hollywood Studios or Tusker House at Disney's Animal Kingdom, you're missing at least one of the characters, bringing it down to the Fab Four, and that's not nearly as catchy. But at Chef Mickey's, all players are on the board here. That being said, only four of these characters will make their way table to table to do one-on-one -on -one meet and greets with the guests. While Donald, Pluto, Goofy, and Minnie are gonna come directly to you, Mickey is kind of the dessert at the end of the meal. Once you're done and you've paid, a cast member will stamp your receipt, then as you leave, there'll be a place where you can go meet and take pictures with Mickey in front of this comically large decorative plate. As soon as you meet him, your receipt gets a second stamp to prove you've already gotten your allotted time with the big cheese. Now there is a photo pass photographer ready to snap your pic while you're shooting the breeze with Chef Mickey, but you can either choose to have them take the photos with their professional cameras, which you can purchase later via Memory Maker on your My Disney Experience app, or you can have the cast member take a photo with your own personal phone or camera for no extra cost. So let's address a big question right off the bat. Do you get enough quality time with each of these characters? The answer, kind of. When we recently visited Chef Mickey's again, we noticed that we got more interaction time with Goofy, Pluto, and Donald, but we found our time with Minnie to be pretty brief, and that's because she's just really popular. Because this restaurant gets so busy, you may only get a chance to see each of these characters once. And frankly, that may be just enough time for you. But for a lot of kids, once is not enough, and I can remember waiting 45 minutes for Pluto to finally get to our table for my two-year-old to meet him, and it was just a waste of time. So you never really know what's going to happen when it comes to the characters. You may be seated at a particular table where they start off their tour and everything will be fine and you'll see everybody really, really quickly and then you can get up and you can go to Magic Kingdom to be a great day. Or you may be seated in one of those like off to the side tables that the characters come to last and maybe there are some demanding families who need to spend more time with them before they get to you and then they only have a couple more minutes before they've got to go. So that's probably one of the reasons that Chef Mickey's is so controversial. People have such varying experiences here depending on where they're sitting and how busy the restaurant is, what time they're eating, and what the situation is in general. And no, you can't go chase the characters down yourself around the dining room. You have to be seated in order to have the characters come up and visit with you, otherwise this place would go from controlled chaos to mayhem. But if you're wanting a meet and greet dining experience where the characters tend to linger a bit longer and things are a little less chaotic, then you may be more apt to choose a restaurant like Garden Grill and Epcot instead. That's Mickey, Pluto, Chip and Dale coming by your table multiple times throughout your meal to check in on you. But again, Garden Grill won't have all the Fab Five for you to take pictures with. Plus, you have to pay for a park ticket on top of your meal price, which you do not have to do to eat at Chef Mickey's because it's in a hotel. So if you're looking to get pictures with all the main players without having to track them down and stand in line for them at the parks, then Chef Mickey's could be a good solution. Now, there are a ton of reasons you may want to chisel out some time during your vacation to check out Chef Mickey's. For starters, it's incredibly close to Magic Kingdom, like within walking distance. So if you need a break from the park midday, you can either walk or catch the monorail to the Contemporary to dine here in the AC. Sure, this restaurant gets packed, but it's still not going to be nearly as crowded as, say, Main Street USA right before a Festival of Fantasy parade takes place. But you can't really just stroll up to Chef Mickey's on a whim and expect to join in on the napkin twirling fun. This place gets booked up much 
months in advance. Chef Mickey's is notorious for its hard to score advanced dining reservations, and you're rarely going to see them pop up as a last minute option on the dining tip board via your My Disney Experience app, though it never hurts to check just in case I have seen them. And that's why you've got to make sure you mark down on your calendar the earliest you can start making those advanced dining reservations. These will open up 60 days before your trip kicks off. Though the Disney World website states ADRs go live starting at 6 a.m. Eastern, they've also been known to drop as early as 5.30 or 5.45. So it's best to get on the website or your My Disney Experience app earlier rather than later. And if you're going to be staying at one of the Disney-owned resorts, you're going to have the upper hand here because you'll not only get that 60-day booking window, but you'll also be able to make reservations up to 60 days in advance, plus the length of your stay up to 10 days. So you may actually be able to book 70 days out instead. So for example, if your vacation starts on July 1st and you're staying for seven days, you can call 60 days before July 1st and make reservations for the whole seven days of your trip if you're staying at a Disney Resort hotel. Now, if you're still not having any luck getting those coveted reservations, don't fret. This isn't going to be the case with every character dining experience out there. Character restaurants like Cape May Cafe for breakfast at Disney's Beach Club, Tusker House at Animal Kingdom, Garden Grill at Epcot, those tend to be easier to snag reservations for. Though they may not feature all five characters at one time, they still could have just the characters you're most excited to meet in the first place, so definitely check those out. It's always good to do your research about each restaurant before booking a table either way, so if you want to know more about each of these locations, check out our ultimate guide to character dining video on our channel after this. Okay, we've established that Chef Mickey's can be high energy, but aside from the character meet and greets, what else is there to check out in the main dining room? So Chef Mickey's is part of the Grand Canyon Concourse in Disney's Contemporary Resort, and that's just a big, huge fourth floor cavernous space. There aren't any real dividers or full walls, so what you have here is a lot of noise that's just reverberating off of all of these surfaces in this soaring space. So that's one reason why Chef Mickey's feels a little chaotic. And you're definitely in the middle of the action here. Dining at Chef Mickey's comes with a view of the monorail as it zooms through the Contemporary's main tower, so you've already got a very cool resorty vibe going on here. The space is bright and airy, it's filled with lots of natural sunlight from those scaling tower windows, and as far as seating is concerned, things look pretty standard. You've got tables with chairs, tables with booths, you know, the usual. The layout feels a lot like one big dining room, but this dining room is divided into different sections with sort of half walls to help everyone spread out a bit more, though this place always seems to feel busy regardless. There's just a lot of activity always going on, from the upbeat music to the people getting up to grab their food off the buffet to the character commotion to the squealing kids. It's a whirlwind, which is either going to be a selling point for you or a big deterrent. Despite the bright, vibrant color schemes and monorail views, I wouldn't say Chef Mickey's is particularly immersive. Again, you're eating in an environment that feels like a big dining room, so you're not going to be dropped into an enchanted forest like you will when you make a reservation for storybook dining at Artist Point with Snow White and Disney's Wilderness Lodge, and you're not going to be seated in a full-on castle with princesses galore like you will be over at Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom. The restaurant does have its own vibrant energy and characters dressed up in cute chef's attire, but I think the immersiveness here is being immersed into quintessential Disney World. Stressed families, emotional kids, that kind of thing. If you ask me when Disney World feels its most Disney World-esque, I would say right after the fireworks in Magic Kingdom and eating at Chef Mickey's. <laughs> All right, time to eat. Let me be completely transparent with you. Chef Mickey's food hasn't always lived up to our expectations. Not to say the food is bad by any means, but there are definitely other character dining experiences that have served us way more memorable meals than we've had at Chef Mickey's. We ate here again recently just to see if the food quality has improved any and to experience all the big dining changes. So let's talk about those for a second. Chef Mickey's originally opened as a buffet, but after the 2020 closures, this restaurant changed its dining experience, like most of the buffets did, from buffet setting to family style setting, meaning the all you care to enjoy portions were served directly to your table instead of you having to go to the buffet lineup and pick them up yourself. But on March 1st of this year, Chef Mickey switched back to its normal buffet service for the first time since 2020. Now for some, buffets are preferable because you get to choose from so many more food options in a single go. But for others, family style dining means you're less likely to have other people being around and touching and sneezing on your food before you put it on your plate. Aside from cast members, of course, who I'm assuming are not sneezing on my food. Also, family style can be a lot easier for families with small kids because 
It can be difficult, especially if you're a single parent or if you're the only caretaker at that particular meal with a bunch of small kids, bringing everybody up to the buffet and managing their plates. That can be a hassle. So the family style dining instead of buffet was admittedly a lot easier for families with small kids. Everybody just got to stay in their seat and nobody had to sort of wrangle a toddler as they go up to the buffet. So for those of us who maybe have runners in the family, (laughs) like little kids that want to run away from you all the time, it's easier to do family style for sure. But other people really do prefer buffets. So again, varied experiences at Chef Mickey's, depending on what you prefer. So Chef Mickey's is open for breakfast and dinner. For breakfast, you're going to find some of the usual morning lineups, like Mickey waffles, French toast sticks, biscuits and gravy. But you'll also find some unique options like carved ham and brisket, which we don't usually associate with breakfast. But hey, if you're not not big on the breakfast cuisine, at least you still have something to pick from other than eggs and hash browns. And our absolute favorite thing on the breakfast buffet is not going to shock you, especially if you've been following this channel for a while now. It's the cheesy potatoes. But for real, if you screw up potatoes coated in cheese, then we need to have a serious talk because that just feels like a surefire recipe for success. These are absolutely delicious. And your kids may not like them because they have that little bit of sour creamy flavor to them, which is amazing, but worth a try. And there are even plant-based options for you to choose on the buffet, like the tofu scramble, which is an exceptionally flavorful dish of spinach and peppers with tofu. Now for dinner, things aren't going to get too terribly adventurous, which could be great for guests looking for a meal that will satisfy the pickier eaters in their party. Though the buffet tends to switch things up depending on season, you're going to probably find options like house-made mac and cheese, a full salad salad bar, shrimp and grits, veggie stir fry noodles, a carving station with the chef's selection of meats for the day, and as the Disney website puts it, a ton of quote classic favorites for children. So what does that look like? Well, expect to see things like an ice cream sundae bar with plenty of toppings, super cheesy pizza, chicken tenders, fresh veggies and fruits, you know, kid-friendly options that won't have your child pushing away their expensive plate of food and leaving it untouched. For an extra cost on top of your prefix buffet price, you can order some specialty alcoholic or non-alcoholic drinks. Now you do get non-alcoholic drinks included when it comes to things like sodas and juice, but there are some specialty non-alcoholic drinks as well. The hot chocolate here is very sweet, but you can choose tons of different flavor options to add to this cozy beverage, including salted caramel, hazelnut, Swiss chocolate, white chocolate, peppermint, almond, toasted marshmallow, pumpkin spice, or gingerbread. But I expect the drink that'll be the biggest hit for kids is gonna be the Minnie Mouse smoothie made with frozen Minute Maid strawberry smoothie and vanilla smoothie topped with whipped cream and a white chocolate bow. They also have a Mickey Mouse one, which is adorable. I will say our last visit to Chef Mickey's did have better quality food than some of our previous experiences but I'm still not gonna put it on the same level as other character dining restaurants like Topolino's Terrace, or again, sorry, Garden Grill. You know I love that place. That being said, that doesn't mean you won't get your money's worth here. Not only are the portions plentiful, but having several kid-friendly options can be a great selling point for parents. However, if you're looking for something more adventurous and memorable for the price you're paying, you may even be better off visiting a different contemporary resort restaurant like Steakhouse 71 or California Grill. But again, those are not going to please the kids as much. All right, now for the cringiest part of these reviews, the price tag. Chef Mickey's is expensive, and it just had a recent price bump up to make it even more expensive. For breakfast, expect to pay a fixed price of $51 per adult, $33 per kid, plus tax and gratuity. And for dinner, you can expect to pay $62 per adult and $39 per kid, again, plus tax and gratuity. To put it further in perspective for you, a family of four with two adults and two kids is gonna pay around $168 for breakfast and a whopping $202 for dinner. Unfortunately, this is kind of the standard for character dining, though Chef Mickey's does tend to be a tiny bit pricier than some of the others, just a few dollars more. At character dining locations like Tusker House at Animal Kingdom and Ohana at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, character breakfasts are cheaper, priced at $45 per adult and $29 per kid, while character restaurants like, again, Garden Grill will be cheaper for dinner at $55 per adult and $36 per kid. Just a few bucks, though. So picking one over the other just because of a price difference isn't exactly the most compelling argument. A better argument instead might be places that save you a ton of money and still manage to fill you up on Disney property. Some of the cheapest tables service restaurants we've come across with all you care to enjoy options are restaurants like Liberty Tree Tavern in Magic Kingdom, that's $39 per adult and $21 per kid, Sebastian's Bistro at Caribbean Beach for $32 per adult and $19 per kid, Whispering Canyon Cafe at Wilderness Resort, that has signature family style
style skillets for $38 per person. And of course, you also have tons of quick service options to choose from. You can even find a quick service right next to Chef Mickey's called Contempo Cafe, which serves up quick and affordable breakfast, lunch, and dinner options, and a selection of seasonal bakery goodies all day long. But now we come down to the meat of the video. Is paying that high price for an experience at Chef Mickey's really worth it? Or are you better off dining somewhere, anywhere else? Right, it might be time to go to Chef Mickey's if you want guaranteed meetings with all five of Disney's most popular characters. Seriously, this is the main reason why you go here. You and your kids will get the chance to meet the Fab Five in a nice air-conditioned building outside of the parks without having to wait in any forever long lines to do so. Plus, they're all dressed up in adorable chef aprons and hats like the hardworking characters they are, and that could be worth the price for you in and of itself. You get food, which you need to have anyway. You get character meet and greets. That way you don't have to waste one of your Genie Plus lightning lanes or your time in the park because time is money in the park, as we know. So this might be the perfect way to both eat and meet characters at the same time and then walk right over to Magic Kingdom, right? And maybe you wanna eat here if you want a place that'll give you good bang for your buck. Despite the high price tag, Chef Mickey's isn't gonna skimp on the quantity of food you get here. You can go back to the buffet as many times as you want. And if you book a later breakfast, this meal may be enough to satisfy both breakfast and lunch for you and your group. And maybe you wanna head here if you want a restaurant your kid is gonna love. From the characters, to the accessible food options, to the overall high energy ambiance, your kid is gonna love this place. And that's why these dining reservations continue to be some of the most coveted of them all. So you might not wanna go to Chef Mickey's if you're on a budget. Character meals don't come cheap, and Chef Mickey's tends to be pricier than others out there. If you're having a hard time stomaching the thought of paying over $160 for breakfast or paying over $200 for dinner, then it may be worth looking to make reservations someplace else, or you may want to stick to mobile ordering from one of Disney's many fast food restaurants on property. And you don't want to come here if you want a quieter meal. This place gets noisy, and if that's not the vibe you're wanting from a restaurant you're paying a lot of money for, then this isn't the restaurant for you. Even character restaurants like Topolino's Terrace and Cape May Cafe can provide you with the meet and greet experience while still giving you a pretty chill environment to dine in. And maybe you just want high quality food. Just to reiterate, the food here is not bad. More than likely, you're still gonna enjoy the options available on the buffet, but considering you can pay the same price or maybe even less for a more memorable dining experience with more adventurous options elsewhere, you may wanna save your hard earned dough and invest in someplace else. We've got tons of suggestions for you featured in our 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. You can buy that over at dfbstore.com. And if you're interested, just make sure to type in code YouTube for some extra savings on your purchase. Remember, with those guides, you get literally everything that we know. It's updated twice a year, so it's absolutely the most current information. And there's also a 100% money back guarantee. If this isn't the guide for you, just let us know and we'll refund everything. All right, so overall, Chef Mickey's continues to split the room. For some, it's a restaurant with okay buffet offerings and a terribly noisy atmosphere that you'd rather not pay the high prices for. But for others, it's a family tradition where you can meet the Fab Five, get tons of food all in one sitting, and enjoy the family-friendly atmosphere that your kids will remember for years to come. So what's your take on Chef Mickey's? Definitely let us know in the comments because it helps everybody watching if you give your recommendations or warnings in the comments as well. We'd love to hear from you and hear your personal experiences. Because remember, Chef Mickey's has a varying outcome for everybody. It really depends on who you are, what you like, when you go, what time of day you're there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of factors to consider. So let us know what your experiences were and what your recommendations are in the comments. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.